Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stream. We are going to be doing an unboxing. Hello, comics. How's it going, people in TikTok land? I should really get like an iPad or something to make this bigger so I can actually see everybody. But what's happening, everybody? All right, let's go over to comments. What's up, Gaming Ham? How's it going? How are you today? So we're gonna we're gonna give it a couple minutes here. Let everybody kind of flood in if you guys want. Um, what would be appreciated is to share this out and let other people know that uh, hey, we're doing an unboxing of the DJ eighty nine plus from Pile Create, which we'll get into all that information soon enough here. But uh, I want to make sure that everything is rocking and rolling on Facebook's end. Because sometimes it does not catch. Uh, I hope my audio is good uh, for the people over in YouTube land. Uh, what am I doing here? Check, check. One, two, one, two. Uh, I had to change my stepper motor and my Anycubic Photon. Really? That's uh, that's an oddball one. That's Don't hear that too often. Um, hopefully my audio is coming in loud and clear. Okay, good, good. Um, so this was the first time that I'm using the DJI mic uh, with this setup. And uh, I'm, I was hoping that my USB 3.0 port would handle it because it's a USB 3.0 to USB-C to the USB-C dongle on the audio grabber. So if it drops, my apologies, but we'll see. How's it going, everybody in TikTok land? What's up? What's up? Don't forget to uh, like, share, give a thumbs up, whatever. Audio is all good. Sweet. Wow, there's only one person online right now. That's kind of odd. Usually there's a handful of people already on here. And what's weird is usually I do these like spur of the moment type thing, but uh, this time I actually like set it up. So yeah, just kind of, kind of strange there, but whatever. I have even got another filament printer, a Delta printer. Ooh. So the the best Delta that I've used was the FL Sun Super Racer. Um, the FL four hundred was pretty good, but uh, I I liked the FL Sun a little bit better, the Super Racer. I like that a little bit better than the V400. Even though the V400 was a, a chunky boy, um, it was probably a little bit better in terms of like build volume. But uh, All right, there we go. Now we got some people coming in here and starting to notify people. Make sure you guys are sharing this out. Just checking over here on TikTok, making sure everything is good. What's up, Mike? How's it going? And yes, we do have our uh, our Mexican Coke to uh, celebrate here. By the way, if anybody works for Coke and they'd like to sponsor, at least for Mexican Cokes, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Or Cokes made in Mexico. What's up, Andrew? How's it going? It's just a cheap Amazon one to help me get products out. Gotcha. Hey, whatever works, as long as it works, that's the main thing. Because the issue with Delta printers is once you have something go wrong with them, they're just never the same. They never are. Like you literally have to tear down the entire machine and rebuild it from zero uh, in order for it to work right. Uh, unless you have like a super ridiculously expensive one, but all the consumer grade uh, Delta printer seem to have that same issue where they're good up until something breaks. So, and I'm glad my audio is working. That's fantastic. I love that. That is great. Okay. So we'll give it uh, about two more minutes here. So we'll start unboxing this at 7:35. So in full disclosure. This printer technically wasn't sent to me. It was given to me at a trade show. Um, so this is a little bit different than most of the printers that you guys will see or talk about. I mean, 
we we've done some printers like this where there are higher priced printers. Um, this one I think retails for about three thousand dollars or thirty five hundred dollars. So it is quite um, quite expensive for what it is, and it does have a specific use on it. However, you can use it for really anything you want resin printing. Uh, but this was specifically designed and made to be a dental printer. So it has a much smaller Z access than most of the printers because it's made to be fast and it's made to just do smaller models. It's not made to do anything super tall like some of the other printers that you guys have seen on my channel um, or some of the printers that you know of that are out there um, that have, you know, three, 400 millimeter build volume. This one is only limited to 100 millimeters on the Z height, um, but it does have a pretty good plate. Uh, I believe it's a 220 by one, 140, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I've been using glow in the dark filament and the customers like it. Sweet, that's good to know. All right, let's check TikTok land and then we'll get this potty started. This is a new setup. Yep, I've been playing around with different setups here and there. And uh, yeah, what's up, Bullet? How's it going? Sorry, TikTok land. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, you know what? I can see you guys. Ha! Totally forgot that TikTok had that swipe to the right. And I can see the chat, but it's still too far away because I have a lazy eye. And uh, I don't have my glasses. I mean, I had my glasses, just not my real glasses. What's up, Vincent? Welcome from the Netherlands. All right, people. It is a minute past what I said, so let's get unboxing here. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for full context, like I said, I got this at a trade show. And um, so while this will be an unboxing video, technically it's not its first unboxing. So things aren't going to be the way that they are if you happen to order this printer for some reason, you work in a dental practice, whatever, um, this, uh, this is going to look different because this was taken out to display at a trade show and basically it was boxed up at the end and then it was given to me to do a review and do some printing and basically get the word out on the company. So a little bit of backstory before I start getting into the, the unboxing here is this is by a company that is called Pio Create or Crete um, or Pio Next. That's what I know them as. Now, some of you guys may have heard of that brand name. Um, that is a subsidiary of Creality. Now, they basically been print, printing. They've been making uh, resin products specifically resin printers and resin for the Creality brand for quite some time. Um, they are the ones that introduced the integral light source, which I'm actually, I think that's a mispronunciation that I've been doing for quite some time. Um, but that's how it was notated in the, um, on the websites and whatnot. Um, on, on their website, it's called integrated light source which I think integral is just a little bit more, more fancier on my opinion. Um, but basically what it is, is it's a completely different type of light source than most of the resin printers that you see out there. So most of the resin printers that you see usually have a cob light source and it has a uh, diverter that basically allows it to light up the entire screen. Uh, or they have a LED matrix, which is essentially looks like biscuits. I mean, that's really what it looks like, like bread, like the Hawaiian bread. You know, you guys know what that is. That's what it looks like, but just with with lights on it. Um, and some of the downfalls of that is that because they're put right next to each other, there's a gap in between there and light doesn't really emit very well. Now, they've, they've done a little bit better job at perfecting that over the years. But there were back in the day, like in the original Elegoos. Um, they had some issues like that where it would actually show up in the prints and you can see it. So you'd have to use a diffuser. Now, again, that's kind of like old school stuff. You know, they, they have improved it. But uh, in my opinion, this is the best light source out there. It is set up like a DLP projection system. So essentially, you have a bunch of lights that set up right here instead of directly right at the LCD screen. 
So you have the LEDs that come and shoot down here onto a mirror, and that mirror bounces back and basically lights up the entire screen. Now, what makes that so much better than any other resin printer out there is that you get 100% coverage on the LCD panel when you are printing. This means that there's no problems in whatsoever when you're printing and you have dimmed light source in one spot or another. There's nothing like that. I mean, you basically shine the light at a mirror and it, it lights up the entire room. You can do this at home. Take a take a light uh, flashlight and shine it at a mirror and it, it brightens up the entire room, right? So, all right. Um, all right, like a laser beam. Kind of, kind of like a laser beam, but it's it's a pack of LED lights. So like your normal LED lights that you would see, like the little round ones or the square ones that have like 20 LEDs. So first and foremost, this takes much less LED power and LEDs to emit that light source as well. So while, you know, uh, uh, this is a larger printer, a normal printer that size would probably have, I don't know, maybe 60 lights on it, give or take 40, 40 to 60 lights. This probably has like 15. So it kind of saves a little bit of energy, but it also saves um, that heat as well. So it's not as hot and heating up everything and causing issues. So let me just check chat really quick here. Laser beams. Yes, yes. What's up, Sergeant? How's it going? Don't forget to like, give a thumbs up, share this out. Let's get some more people on here. We only got nine people on the, on the chats. So TikTok is blowing up more than uh, more than the regular things. And I even gave everybody a heads up, but whatever. All right. Without further ado, let's get into this. Um, I'm probably going to have to set this down and do a little bit of unboxing while it's on the floor here, but we'll at least open it up and see how it goes. Just as usual, when you guys are opening things and you're using sharp objects, make sure you cut away from yourself. Do not cut towards yourself. Or if you do try to cut towards yourself, do it in a fashion that you're very far away. Extend your arms as far as you possibly can. All right. This is a chunky boy. All right. Ugh. So. Now, I've already got these. I really don't need them. This is, this is definitely more than what I need. Um, but this is basically a dental resin and 3D printer manufacturer brochure. And it basically gives you a breakdown of all of the printers that they have and that they have created. Now, one of these ones I wanted to show you guys. Hopefully, it's in this catalog or in another catalog I can show you. Um, but there is one in particular. Of course, it's not in this catalog because this is an older one. There we go. So this one is a slightly larger version. Um, you guys might know this one as the Creality Hallet Sky. Um, now, theirs is a little bit different, but um, they do have a version that looks exactly like it. it has a 14K screen. I opted for the less um, flashy uh, screen, I guess you could call it. So this one only has a 10.3 inch 8K LCD screen. Um, and it's got 76, 7680 by 4320 pixels. Um, so it's got a really nice setup here. And again, the print size is 192 by 120 by 100. So again, that Z height is much, much smaller. But it is a ginormous machine. And we'll get to the reason why uh, in a second here. But uh, this is X and Y axis, that comes out to 29 microns which is quite impressive for an ak screen of its size but again it also boils down to this is exactly how this printer is it's made to be and designed for heavy usage so we have our typical power supply we're not going to use that right now i got one already set up we have um looks like just a basic printer set up Cable manager. All right, we'll, we'll look at that in a quick second. We have our VAT. Okay, good. I was a little worried. I'm like, oh, this doesn't look like it's got some FEP on it, but it does.
All right. Hopefully you guys can hear that pretty well. Set that on to somewhere safe. Put that over here. Now trying to unbox this big beast. What's up, Rob? How's it going? All right. So it looks like this is all in one piece. So we should be able to just lift it out pretty easily. All right. So as I said, it's kind of a chunky boy. But there's a lot of stuff packed in here. That's why it makes it so much chunkier than most of the resin printers out there. Okay. So um, it actually looks like that is a secondary vat, which is awesome. Uh, I've never had a resin printer include a secondary vat. So that's nice to see. Not that I really need it because I personally hate having extra stuff around here if I'm not going to really use it. And I don't know if I'm going to actually use that or not. We'll, we'll have to see. So go and check this really quick. Uh, I guess from what I've heard. Uh, no, they are not deleting TikTok. Um, they're actually going back to the... Uh, to the board uh on tiktok so um that uh that that bill that passed uh is being re re-looked at whatever you want to call it because so many people have called in so anyway let's go ahead and take a look at this so we do have a lift up hood yes no lift up and put somewhere else hoods yes this is so much nicer i don't understand why so many manufacturers still continue to make the hoods that lift off and go somewhere else. Talking about you, Elegoo. Um, I, I can't, it's not needed anymore, okay? There, there's no need for extra stuff to be around here in any way, shape, or form. Just go with a lid that that either comes off uh, and on the front or lifts up like this. Keep it on the printer. It'll make it a lot easier to handle and you won't have to worry about that extra space because, I mean, the hoods take up a lot. I actually have two of my hoods sitting over there because I don't have places for them. Like, I have my stuff set up here in a specific way, and I don't have enough room for them to be taken off every single time. So they just, they're off, always. So I actually have two printers that are always open air exposure. It's not the end of the world. I do have a air filtration system right behind me. So we're good. All right. Without further ado, let's hope this bad boy powers on. Because you know what? I didn't ask if this was a 240 or a 110. So we're going to find out real quick. It's not going to do magic smoke. It's just not going to turn on. All right. So it's turning on. And we do have the Pionex logo on here. Now on the front uh, right, we do have a USB uh b and a usb a port on here i'm not really sure why you would need a usb a port that's kind of like a like a, a 2d printer thing so i don't know it's very strange all right let's see if we can set this up because uh it looks like we are not in english here so this will be interesting All right, let's see if we can. There we go. Bingo. Chinese mainland, international area. So we're going to do next. Might have to put in some coding here. Excuse me. All right, so now we're all set up. We're on the Wi-Fi, so we can directly link back to China so they can steal all the files that I'm going to print off of this. Kidding, of course, but even if they did, it's not the end of the world. I mean, most of the stuff I print is free online, so anybody who's anybody can grab it. 
Anyway, um, all right, so we have our print section. There's nothing on there because I'm sure there's a USB stick on here. Uh, we have our setting. So we have a cleaning. We have the Z-axis movement, the print settings, and other settings. So let's go into other settings. We have an update, Wi-Fi, details, language, and region. Should we see if there's any updates? Ooh, they don't do uh, Wi-Fi update, huh? That's kind of good, because uh, if you guys remember, I did have the Corelli Hell at Sky. Well, the issue was, is I had an alpha version. Uh, so this was pre-production. I was one of three people, I think, maybe five people that actually had that unit way before it was even produced. And the problem was, is because it had an alpha board, it still had their board inside of the Creality printer. So it was completely different than any other units that were manufactured because everything else had the Creality board in it. Um, so what, uh, what, it, what had happened was, is I went to go and update it, and I forgot that you need to update it in steps. So I missed, I think, three or four updates. And I just went to update to the latest and greatest, and I bricked the printer. And unfortunately, you can't unbrick it because all the steps that they require you to do to unbrick the printer, well, it don't work because it's a different type of board. It's more populated than the Creality board. It's got a lot of technical stuff on it. So the problem was is I had to go through Creality when I should have actually went through Pionex to see if I can actually get it set up. And I probably could have had Pionex software loaded on it. But, hey, it is what it is. It's gone out of my hands. And this one is our replacement for the time being, which essentially is the same type of setup, just, again, with a much lower Z height. Um, there is a giant hose back here. Uh, that is for the auto refill system, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And then this is a little cap that holds the actual resin bottle right in there. So they did provide me with some dental resin. Unfortunately, it's water washable resin. I'll deal with it for the time being, but uh, I highly suggest against any and all water washable resin. Uh, they are just not very user friendly and uh, there's much better resins out there in general. Uh, there's really only one company that I can ever really say is good for water washable. And that is Ministry of Resin. And if that's even if they're still around, they were probably the best water washable resin that I've used so far. Um, but everybody else, you can kick them to the curb because they're just they're not good. And I know they're developing uh, tougher resins for it. But there's also the other side of, OK, when you have a wash that you use to wash your prints with, it's much, much harder to get rid of that wash than it is to get rid of like an IPA wash or a denatured alcohol wash, whatever it is. Usually you could just set it outside and it'll evaporate in less than a day. Whereas water, it takes like a week for that to, like if I if I had that thing set out in the, the sun for a couple days, it would probably take like maybe a quarter of it away uh, if it was water. If I put that out right now, it'll evaporate in a second, so. What's up, Maker? Maker Mind Nexus, how's it going, Dan? I have two vats because I can have one for clear resin and the other for other resins. That's actually a really good idea because I have been switching a lot lately between clear and solid. It's not a huge issue because I'm just used to doing it, uh, swapping between them and cleaning it up. So that's that's actually a really good idea. I like that. That's uh, I dig that. What's up, Nightcore? How's it going? All right, let me uh, let me check the chat here really quick in the TikTok land. Let's talk microns. Microns is twenty nine microns for this. It is a fancy resin printer. Uh, for this one, I believe it retailed for about thirty five hundred dollars. I will have to uh, to confirm that, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was thirty five hundred. Uh. Oh, so it, it's actually, it's on sale right now. Um, so you can get a DJ89 
Plus, which is this exact model, for the lovely low price of $25.89. And I'm sure that's not including shipping. So, but anyway, um, so as you can see, this is a little bit smaller for this resin. Um, I did have some Creality resin, which is essentially is eSun. But there you go. It fits a little bit better than the one kilogram ones. So, I mean, you can you can pretty much put any one kilogram bottle in there and it, it pretty much fits. I don't think there's anything besides like the Sunmu bottles or the uh, Grat Kit resins. Those have the oddball bottles um, because they're made by the same company. Um, and J.O. J.O. is another one. So um, those are different style bottles. Oh, and Yusu as well. Obviously, you can't put, uh, you know, that type of bottle inside of a resin printer. So, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, so what makes this uh, so much specialer than the one that I was deciding on getting, which essentially was a upgraded version of the Creality Hallet Sky with a 14 inch, uh, 14K screen, uh, I went for the older version, which is the 8K 10.3 inch uh, screen, only because it has auto feed systems, it has a heater system, and it has, um, well, not only the auto feed, but it also has auto recall, which is really, really cool. I dig that. So um, that's kind of like where the Hallet Mage got its stuff. So let's see what's in what's in the bag. All right, so in the bag, we have our little scraper. Uh, don't ever use these on your vats. Use a silicone scraper. And in fact, I should really like design a resin printing kit for everybody. Because like things like this, people don't think about, but they actually help quite a lot. And uh, Creality is actually the only one that ever included a brush with, uh, with the resin printers, as far as I remember. So that's really cool because that definitely helps quite a lot. Um, we have our nice little spatula. Ooh, this looks nice. Ooh, I like this. It's got a nice uh, nice edge there. And uh, it is definitely, definitely skimmed down properly. That's really nice. We have some uh, filters here. We'll definitely be using those up for sure. Uh, we have a USB stick. It says DJ89 Plus, and then we have another USB stick. So I'm not sure what is what and what is what. Uh, looks like we do have some extra pair of VAT screws for the secondary VAT. So that's really, really cool. Um, that's one thing that I do like about this system as well, is most of the resin printers that you see on the market have plastic VAT screws and plastic screws for the knob to hold the, uh, the build plate. This is all metal all around. So it's very... Um, it, it doesn't like hold all of the resin and residue and, and stuff, sticky stuff that gets on everything. So it's very easy to clean and keep it clean. So it's, it's, um, what do they call that? Like not humane, but like, ah, the name slips my mind, but essentially it, it, you're, you have the ability to keep it clean, uh, a, a lot easier than plastic parts do. Plus, on top of it, plastic parts tend to uh, tend to degrade over time as you use IPA and you use certain certain resins will actually destroy um, the vat screws and stuff like that. Um, again, water washable resin is known to uh, known to do that. So anyway, we have some Allen keys, which I don't really think we're going to need anything. This should be leveled right out of factory. We do have a couple gloves in there as well. And then, uh, yeah, this is all the setup for the, the auto refill system. We have our quality card, which is, you know, if you guys have had a Creality printer, you guys know this quality card. It's always been in there. Calibration card. It's always nice to have. And then we also have our user manual from the Pio Next, which is strange because I think they actually have changed their name recently. So I knew them as Pionex when I first started hearing about them when the Creality Hell at Sky was released. And uh, I think they're actually changing their name to Pio Create um, because their actual name is Shenzhen. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, Pio Create 3D Technology. That's actually the name of the company. 
um, but they are based directly out of the Creality Factory. Um, and yeah, of course. Oh no, this does have dual. Okay, that's cool. So I was a little worried because I was seeing a, lo a lot of stuff in Chinese and I was uh, concerned that all the information was going to be in Chinese, but it's not. So, oh, okay. So it looks like we have, uh, no, it's got built on Wi-Fi. So I'm not sure what that is. So we have a parts list here. Introduction, parts list. There we go. Let's see what maybe it'll tell us. So it says it's only supposed to have one U-disc. But it has two. So maybe these are just duplicates. I don't know. Or maybe one's the original for the DJ89. And this one's for the DJ89+. Plus. We'll take a look at that in a second, though. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and get this operating. And we'll raise the Z-axis and get it all set up here. Go back. Uh, we'll go Z-axis movement. And we'll go, I think it's back to zero. Yeah, it's a little worried there because I was like, there's a piece of foam there. Uh, I could possibly kill my screen. So thankfully, we're good. Yeah, that is nice. I like that. I like it, Bobby. I like it a lot. That's like, that's so much smoother because it's got a lot of weight on it. I dig it. I dig it, dig it, dig it. All right. I'm going to step in front of the camera here for a quick second. Because we're going to check to see if we got a screen protector on here. If not, I'm going to have to reach out to our friends over at Bullet Brands and see if we can get a screen protector made for this. Uh, it'll be specifically just for me, though. So, no, we do not. But. I'm pretty sure I got a screen protector that'll work with us, so we'll be okay. All right, so it looks like it is very strange. Okay, so there is a max fill line. It says that it can hold up to a thousand milliliters, which is kind of cool. Um, that's a first I've seen. I've never so far seen anybody put the actual fill of what it can take on here like sorry i i've never seen anybody put a maximum of a thousand on a printer of this size what i'm in okay so we do have in out and stop the the auto refill does work so we're going to stop that and that does work. Okay, cool. Oh, you know what? I think I got to push this in a little, little bit different. There we go. little strain putting this in here with the auto refill system there we go i'll be honest i rarely use the auto refill systems and especially on a printer this size it's almost not needed for me because the z height is so much smaller than anything so um, sent you a private message with a question. All right, cool. Looks like an old school retro printer. Looks cool, right? Does look kind of cool. Looking good, sir. Oh, well, thank you, Raymond. How's it going, man? All right. So let's go ahead and we're, we're going to actually do all the bells and whistles for this. All right. Let's go ahead and take this all out. Now there are instructions on the actual, like outside of this says glue the acrylic to the back of the cable manager tear off the adhesive film stick to the appropriate portion so let's see if this tells us like we need to put this on the printer somewhere 
I can take a wild guess at where this needs to go, but I just want to see if it tells me um, if everything is good. Now, it does say that we should calibrate it, so maybe we will end up calibrating it. Not something I'm particularly care for doing. Uh, most of these printers should come pre-calibrated out of the uh, out of the gate. Nope, doesn't tell you. So my guess is it should be like right here. And then you just basically put that right up there. But the thing is, is they don't tell you how to install that. That's crazy. Okay, I know level the platform, level the platform doesn't take that long. Guidance use and feed system. Okay, okay. So let's go into, so this should auto refill for us. So we're going to go into settings and we're going to go into print settings and we're going to go into feed system. We're going to do automatic uh, feed delay, one minute, return delay. Okay. All right. So that's set up, right? Yep. And then we're also going to do preheat. We're going to turn on the heater automatically. Uh, that's a little too toasty. So this is automatically set at 30 degrees Celsius. That's way too toasty. 27 should be good enough uh, for most of it. Okay, printing parameters. Okay, so that's our exposure and everything. So this does direct to print from the Hallet, oh, sorry, Pile Create box. I was going to say the Hallet box, but it is different. Um, other settings, we're good. We got everything. Details, do we need anything? No, this is just giving us all the information. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and see if we can try and set this up the way that it needs to be. I'm going to put some gloves on for this just because, you know, safety first. Looking good. Try YouTube. What manner of tomfoolery is this? This is the Pio, Pio Create. DJ89, which is essentially a Creality product, byproduct, I should say. It is different. Um, it is Creality, but it's not Creality. So um, it is not made by Creality. It is just owned by Creality. Kind of like Sobel. Try YouTube for uh, for looking to see how to install it. I could, I could do that, and then watch. I put I put these gloves on, and now ooh, I am able. Ah, uh -huh, they do have it. Thank you. But I think it's just the operating procedure, so we'll we'll see. They literally do not show it. <laughs>
Okay, so they actually don't even show that on there. They just have it directly into the bottle, like super, super basic rig. Okay. So I guess we don't, we don't really need this, but obviously we're going to keep this around. So. Probably going to have to take the cover off. Oh, no. Okay. And this is where that, um, that piece comes into play. Of course, I don't got nails. All right. We're definitely going to try and design something around that because there is a screw right at the back of here that uh we could definitely do some designing for so what's up joseph how's it going man long time no see <laughs> all right this is it we'll wait for you to do pour in the resin by hand just with a straw right i mean i could just pour it in but what's the fun of that let's uh let's sit down and have a chat shall we all right let's go ahead and we're going to plug in the DJ 89 plus I keep saying DJ 89. I mean, that is what it is, but I just always think that I'm like using uh, like a DJI mic. All right. So now we're going to go and print, see if there's anything on here. There's not anything on here. Let's see if there's any other settings. Nope. There's nothing on here parameters we might have to set up a print so let's take this out we might have to open it up on the computer let's see what 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 is what 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 plug this one in to see how it goes What is up with this one? There we go. That was weird. Yep, nothing on the print list. Okay. So we're going to have to actually go to the computer and print something out, which is great because I yesterday I had my grill. I had this all uh, 3D scanned by my wife yesterday because she happens to work in a dental office. And they do have a uh, 3D scanner, which is insanely accurate. Um, probably some of the best scanning I've seen ever. Uh, super simple. It scans everything. It scans your bite. Like, it's, it's just, it's crazy. But it's also a fifteen dollars or $18,000 printer or a scanner that's literally just a wand. So... All right, let's go and check this out and see if maybe we can, you know, destroy some stuff. Hopefully it doesn't disconnect anything. It does. Oh, well. All right. So let's go and check on some stuff here. We'll go and open up the drive here see what's on it might just have to move a file over 
uh, software install, testing model. So it should be able to test the model there, but it might be because it's not in there. I don't know what any of this is. Extra videos, extra install. Okay. So you know what? I pulled my stuff into the slicer yesterday. So let's get the pile create box. And I'll actually, I'll throw you guys on here so you can see what's going on. Let's go and present and let's go share screen and we'll go to window and we'll go in here. At least for you guys in the, uh, in the land of our streaming stuff. So we have the DJI, DJ, DJ 89 plus here. And we're going to go and open up my grill. Let's go ahead and find it. I think I have it in 3D objects here. Uh, I'm looking for Matt Scan. There we go. Okay. So we have my, this is my grill. Yes, I'm missing a tooth there. Yep. I'm actually missing a tooth on both sides, but. Anyway, so let's go. We're just going to we're going to throw these on just how they are. It's been a hot minute since I've used this software. We need to rotate this a little bit. Okay, let's rotate this like that. Rotate this like that. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's go into where's support. A flat, reaching, lettering, split. Does this not have a support set up? No, it doesn't. Clone, auto layout. Okay, let's go. Oh, there's a the support. Okay. So let's go and we'll put 50% density on here and we're just going to, we're going to cheat it this time. We're going to do all. That's probably not going to be good. Uh, definitely need some more supports than that. Let's put it up to 60 and we're going to auto support. Yes, I do. That's a little bit better. That would probably work. We're going to go ahead and add some more in here, though. Uh, add. Add. This is why I say never rely on auto supports. They don't always work. Always, always want to check your stuff. Or everything's good. While it looks good, it probably isn't. One here, one there, one there, and one there, and that should be copacetic. What's kind of nice about this is it shows you like where the angling is that it probably won't print very well. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Anyway, all right. So I think we're good on that. Hopefully. Then we're gonna slice it up. Slice it up. Okay, so it's telling us it's gonna be three hours and thirty minutes for this. And it's basically going to take thirty milliliters of resin. And our weight is gonna be thirty-three, and that's pretty much it. Um now we should be able to send this to the printer even if it'll allow me if it's set up right we'll see 
Could it be a zip file? No, nah, it, it's it's on there. It's just inside of a folder. The file it is. Uh, this is taking a long time, and I'll be honest, I got a pretty beefy computer. So, <laughs> what's up, Reigns? How's it going, man? Take a quick, uh, quick Coke. Uh, quick Coke refresh. Wow, this is taking really long. Mm -hmm. This slicer is insanely slow. Like, I'm not even at 30%, maybe 30. That's that's really slow. <laughs> I mean, if anybody's seen me slicing files, you guys know how fast my computer is. It's made to be a workhorse. So that's crazy. But you can see it is slow. It's bogus. Bogus. Ah, anybody know the reference? Come on. Oh my God, there's 25 people in here? Holy cow. That's awesome. That's like the most people I've ever had on a stream. Woohoo. I don't know who you are, where you are, where you're from, but thank you. If you guys aren't following, go ahead and hit that follow button. The more users, the better. User. But yeah, we'll, we'll let this sit for a little bit. Um, you know what? Let's go over some, uh, some tech specs, shall we? You grab one of these brochures because it's got all the information on it anyway. And we're basically going to go through it. Okay. So this printer is an 8K printer. Like I said, it is a 10.3 inch LCD panel. Yes, it is still LCD. It is not, um, not uh, DLP, uh, even though the name kind of hints at that. Uh, it does have a heating chamber. It goes from anywhere between 20 and 35 degrees, which is really, really nice. That means we can do really specialty resins on this. Um, but again, this is probably going to be more for dental. Uh, for some of you that may or may not know, I'm kind of going into that field. That is one of the great things about resin printing, unlike FDM, is you have so many different types of areas that you can print for that it's just unmatched by fdm you have from dnd miniatures to dice uh to models to uh functional parts yes you can do functional parts you just it depends on how deep your pocket is uh to dental stuff i mean literally the sky's the limit you can print anything casts for people uh, all kinds of things um stuff that fdm printers they can do most of it but the thing is is you're going to do it faster and better on a resin printer the quality is going to be better less sanding time that you have to deal with um and you can also incorporate cool things you can basically print any color you want on demand so if you stock clear or solid white you can literally dye that with a pigment not an alcohol pigment ink you don't want alcohol because alcohol will uh diminish over time so the color will actually run out of it. Like it'll not, not run out of it, but it'll essentially like lighten up and it won't be as vibrant. Uh, whereas pigment, pigment's going to stay with it forever. So I highly suggest pigment over uh, anything else. But anyway, um, so that's just some of the things that are great about it. And again, this is going to be twice as fast as any FDM printer that's going to print that same model, and you're going to have the quality of it. Um, it's going to be basically like injection molded almost. So anyway, um, it's got an automatic feeding system. You guys saw that, and it has an automatic retract, which we're going to test out and see how it is. Uh, it says it's got a stable Z-axis structure. Well, that's also because... It has a dual linear rail system, which is way overkill for this printer. But that means that we're going to have really crisp and clean prints going on this printer all the time. Um, like I said, this is a LCD printer. Uh, the build volume is 192 by 120 by 100. Yes, the Z axis is very, very small on this, but it's made for a specific application use. So we're perfectly fine with that. 
If you want bigger, there's plenty out there. Go ahead and get a bigger printer if you absolutely need that. Um, anyway, machine size. Uh, so this is a chunky machine. Like I said, it is 467 by 290 by 500. So it is a very, very large printer, but it does pack a lot of cool features on it. So kind of give and take with that type of stuff. Um, it can do a 60 millimeters per hour print speed. Um, so that's not bad. It's it's kind of slow. We can probably jack that up, but we do risk quality over speed. So just keep that in mind when you guys do jack up speeds on anything. Even with proper tuning, there's always going to be that chance that you're going to sacrifice one for the other. Okay, it's it's just it's natural motion of law. Um, Anyway, layer thickness, we can go from 0 0.025 all the way up to 0 0.1. So essentially from like super high quality detail, which unfortunately when you go lower, it's going to increase the print time um, because you're squishing those layers uh, together uh, all the way up to like an FDM at 0 0.1, which we can also increase the time with it. If we're not looking for anything fancy, if we just need a rough model, um, we can basically print at 0 0.1. But the thing is, is even though I call it a rough model, it's still going to provide a better quality print than really any any FDM printer uh, can print out. So just keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, the X and Y axis accuracy is at 29 microns or 29 UM. That is how they say microns. I don't really know how they get microns from UM, but hey, it's a whole, uh, you know, science thing that is way over my head. So, um, like I said, printing screen, 10.3 inch AK monochrome screen, uh, AC 100, 240 voltage rating. It uses the Piocrete box uh, that does uh, allow you to print off of Windows 7 uh, or above X64. And it does support Mac systems. So for those who are very limited with your Mac systems, this does print on it. Uh, it supports up to 13 different languages. And uh, the weight on this is 21.75 kilograms, which I can't math correctly in my head, but that's somewhere around like 30 pounds. No. Yeah, I think so. Like 35 pounds, somewhere around there, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, that's pretty much what we have here. Let's go. Oops. I pressed something I shouldn't have. There we go. Allow access. Let's see what this says. Okay. So now we're going to try and find our printer, if we can. Ah, there we go. Uh, password error. Ooh, do we have a password? So now we need to go back to our control here. Let's go into this. Let's see, USB disk printing, USB Wi-Fi printing. Uh, okay, let's see if there is any Wi-Fi stuff going on here. No, it doesn't tell me that I need anything added onto this huh so that's why it took so long it was just it was taking forever is there a setting on here no We already connected to the Wi-Fi. We well, know that. We might have to do this a little bit backwards. Do it all over again. Because I do not see anything about a password.
Ah, there we go. We need to create one. Okay. So now let's see if we can get this set up. All right, we're going to send it, send it. Okay, so it's in sending state, 65%, 70%. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and fill this in. See how this works. Hopefully it works. That was weird. There we go. I was getting a little worried there. Live discontinued. Bye. We get we just got dropped from TikTok. Uh, Tron reference? No, not at all. <laughs> I am definitely a user. <laughs> I mean. Here is uh, here's my one screen. If you can't tell, it says Ncom on it, and it's a live wallpaper. So it basically creates Ncom, and then it goes back around and it'll create it. <laughs> I love Tron. Tron is one of my favorite movies for sure. This is insanely slow. So unfortunately, we lost the good old folks over at TikTok. Because TikTok has decided to uh, showcase one-hour live streams if you are not uh, showing engagement on it, I guess. And I guess I was away for too long. And yeah, that's, that's what happened. So... Been doing Disney Day downcount for people with my printers. So I. Excuse me. Here. I was never a big Disney person until they started to do the Disney Tron stuff. And then now I'm all for it. <laughs> this is like watching paint dry. This is the most slowest, ungodly, long system I have ever seen. Also, it doesn't help that my table is definitely way off balance. Let's see if we can kind of improve that. I'm not a program. Identify yourself, program. That's awesome that we still have 25 people on here. I am I am digging this live stream. Um, I wish all my live streams could be like this. That's awesome. I absolutely am flabbergasted. And oddly enough, most of you guys are on Twitter. That's even crazier. So I thank you all from, uh, sorry, X-Land, whatever you want to call it. Which, if you guys are commenting on, on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, um, my system apparently does not show me any comments on there. So I really hope 
that none of you guys are trying to comment because I like to be a little bit engaging with everybody, but I also like to have um, everything all set up here. So uh, let's see. Oh, and of course, Creality just went live too, so I'm probably going to start losing some people here. Oh my god, this is forever. This is definitely the slowest auto-filling system I've ever seen. So let's go over to X and see if we got some people chit-chatting here. Nope, doesn't look like it. I don't even know if you guys can chat on here. But that's cool that there's 17 people from Twitter. I dig it. I don't I definitely don't have a lot of followers on Twitter. By the way, no, uh, that's the best Coke. Yeah, can't change my mind. All right, so once that fills up a little bit, we're just gonna we're gonna hit print, and that's pretty much gonna be it for the live stream uh, after that because uh, I'm not gonna have you guys sit here for three hours while this prints. Um, but I definitely want to at least have a, a layer of resin in it. My curiosity though is, does it have an auto stop? That is my million dollar question. Is how does it determine when it needs to stop? Does it have a trigger system or what? That is the question. And if it does, how does it trigger? Because I see there's two like posts on each side of the vat. But uh, yeah, I don't know how it triggers it. Or do we set it up in the system here? Do we have this set up? I thought it had it on manual. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I did that or it did it, whatever. We're, we're just going to, we're, we're good now. We're going to go ahead and click this. Select parameters. Uh, settings. I don't think it's got any parameters on it, does it? Pretty rare nowadays for these to have parameters on it. But who knows? Maybe it will. Nope, it does not. So we're gonna we're gonna wing this. Um, exposure forty seconds. Exposure time is three seconds. Okay. Let's go back, and we're just going to start it. All right, our heater is heating, and everything is set up. So here, here goes nothing. Now, I do see that this has a small T8 lead screw on this as well. And uh, these linear bearings are insane for what this printer needs. I, I forgot to remove the foam underneath the heater there. It'll be all right. One thing I wish it had. Oh, no, it does have temperature. Okay. So we're going to let this play out here. I'm going to check chat really quick. I've been doing an online course to learn about metal 3D printing additives. That's awesome. Back pressure switch. Yeah, I'm not sure how this exactly works. 
I'll have to look into it. You know what? Do you guys want to come a little bit closer? Let's uh, come a little bit closer, baby. We'll get up close and personal with the uh, the Pio Next Pio Create. Actually, it's Pio Next. Let me do some AMSR for you guys. I don't know how good that was, but yeah. So basically, we're setting up temperature. It's twenty six point nine right now. It's getting to twenty seven. Um, that's usually what I have most of my printers set up for heating is 27 degrees. That's usually pretty good. And once that's set, we should be okay. Um, but the question is, is when is this going to stop pumping? Pump up the jam. Pump it up. Buy your feet up. Something. And the jam is pumping. Because we might have to, uh, might have to stop this. Motor speed, exposure time, raise height. Yeah, that's fine. Because while it's three hours and thirty-five minutes to print this, so it says, uh, it's definitely going to be longer with this uh, this resin refill. Maybe it was a bad idea to, uh, you know, add in the uh, auto refill. <laughs> I don't know. But what's cool is because this is an ambient temp and this is filling. That means that as this is filling, there is going to be, um, this is going to be heated up as it fills. So that's kind of nice. Uh dum di dum di dum. The course is free, and it's via Titans of CNC Academy. Never heard of that. I'm just still flabbergasted that 25 people are still on here. That, out of anything, just amazes me. Insufficient resin. Please check dosing model. We should have enough in there. Should be good. Yeah, we got we got we got resin in there. All right, uh, there we go. We're starting to print. So there, there's my fancy teeth. So we'll see. We'll see if it fails or not. Um, this will be this will be quite interesting. So uh, I'm sure I'll post up some videos on, on the Tiki Talks and everywhere else that I possibly can. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna call it a night here. We'll uh, we'll probably check out Creality's live stream, uh, see what they're doing, and uh, kind of go from there. But uh, I thank you guys all for stopping in and chatting and watching. And yeah, that's really awesome that we still have uh, so many people on 
on the live stream here. So I really dig that. I thank you very much. That means a lot to me. So, but uh, here it is in all of its glory, the Pionex DJ89. Uh, again, this is a resin dental resin printer, uh, but obviously you can use it for other things, but it is specifically designed for dental use. So if you guys are in the market for a dental printer, we will be doing a lot more content on this. And obviously it'll still be pretty much geared towards dental stuff, but we'll throw on some other stuff on there just to say, hey, it can do some other things. Uh, what that is, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Maybe we'll throw some mini-me's on it and kind of just do a, uh, we're going to print the full Akuma on here type thing uh, and kind of go from there. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's all, all we're going to do for the night. Um, if you guys are on TikTok, I do do live streams pretty much every single night on TikTok, late night. Uh, it is currently 8.47. Um, so we've actually, really? only been doing the stream for an hour that's 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 light for a live stream for me um so anyway um yeah if you guys are on tiktok i'm always there live streaming uh sometimes i do do live streams here on facebook youtube twitch twitter you name it anybody that can have the ability to do a uh, video um yeah i basically have the ability to uh to do some live streaming so everybody's always welcome as long as you play nice and uh yeah i hope i see you guys there so i'm gonna set the camera down here you guys can watch for a little bit longer but uh ultimately we're gonna be uh we're gonna be calling it quits here in a quick second once i get this all set up oh god we're gonna put you back up here There we go. All right, guys. It's 1.47 a.m. there. What's up, Nubinator? Sorry, I got kicked off of TikTok because I didn't see that I needed to uh, to keep doing the thing. But anyway, I thank you guys all for uh, watching the stream. And uh, yeah, just uh, keep an eye on the content that we're going to be providing for this printer. And if you guys are interested, you know, just, you know, uh shoot me a message uh ask some questions comment whatever um again if you guys can uh like this uh live stream we are on multiple platforms we're on youtube we're on facebook we're on twitch we're on twitter uh we were on tiktok until they decided to cut the feed so we're pretty much anywhere you can think of like i said so um but i thank you all for stopping in and watching and chit chatting and uh We'll definitely do this again with another printer. We got a couple more that we got to do some unboxings for. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you there. And uh, till next time, guys, happy printing.